Hey guys, it is Matt from Armstrong Gaming. We are back again with XCOM episode 5. Alright, so today we're going to be taking a look at doing another mission. You can just see me, I've uh, put back the clip just a little bit from the last film, just because of the way I record. You can see me just handing out medals and so forth to the appropriate um, members of my crew just to make sure that they get the signed bonuses so that way they can shoot better and so forth. Um, so you can see me awarding some sniping bonuses to uh, my sniper Martinez. Uh, last episode we lost our first member, uh, it was Kong Cheng. He died randomly um, against the car. So you can just sort of see me going through, I've selected the um, carapace armor here. Um, that's the first level of major armor you can get. Uh, obviously we've picked up the nanofiber as well. You can wear both simultaneously, the nanofiber is just a vest. Um, so we're getting a council mission, um, well council mission, mission basically. You get certain ones of these throughout the game at certain times, and they're done in a certain order. Um, so the one we're going to go to is one of the... can be quite difficult. I'm going to show you how to get through it. It's called the Burning Prophet. Um, and it can be a little difficult, but at the same time it can be one of the easier ones, just because if you know what you're doing, then you can just go about it. But if you don't, then it can sort of get a little tricky. Uh, so I know some things from playing this multiple times and I'm going to try and show you without telling you what to do. Cool, so you know that I like to go nice and slow if you're a regular viewer to this series. I like to go slow. So these videos tend to be a bit longer than what they sh probably should be for that reason alone. Oh, I apologize for it. This video is around about the 19 minute mark. Um, and that is literally just because of the way I roll in this particular format. So you can see me here, I like to keep my guys nicely grouped and everything like that. I know that there's not a lot of cover here, so I just move them up slowly, um, leapfrogging as I go. Um, and just make sure that they can see around the appropriate corners, because I know that there's going to be thin men on the rooftops, as you can see here. Um, and because they shoot out a poison cloud, they can be quite difficult dealing with later on, especially with the VIP that you need to collect. So the objective for this mission is to locate any survivors. Obviously there's a gunfight that's gone on and a lot of the people around this area have died due to stray bullets or being deliberately cut down. Um, we're not too sure as a organization what has happened, how it has happened, and what is happening. So we want to know what's going on. So we need to find any survivors, locate them, and get them to the extraction point. Um, so this can be a tricky mission. Uh, it has times when you can get easily overwhelmed. Um, so you need to watch your flanks, everything like that. I tend to put a guy high um, so take elevation, get on top of a building. Uh, I don't do that super early, but I do that at about the mid stage of the game. Because later on, especially the last building where you flew in from, because you need to get back to that extraction point, there is, I think, three enemies on the rooftop total. Uh, you can hear, see me here throwing the grenade, trying to get the kill because I've moved into a bad position and the thin men's moved behind the car. Unfortunately I don't quite get the throw. I uh, don't get the distance unfortunately so I know I'm playing catch up where I'm moving people deliberately into other positions for the expressed purpose of making sure that that person doesn't die. I lost a character in the last mission I don't particularly want to lose another one so every move in this turn has been devoted to keeping that person alive um, which is not what you want to do um, the needs of the few should not weigh out, outweigh the needs of the many but since it's only one guy um, I figured I, I can do this, he's got three hit points, all you got to do is hit once I don't even hit once so 
Uh, didn't quite work out for me. <laughs> Alright, so you can see there, four misses, one grenade miss, plus three shot miss, and I take a critical hit to the chest for the person that I didn't want, and she panics and moves into a un rather unfortunate coverless position. Thankfully, the they can't finish the job. Uh, because she's panicked, I don't believe I get act you know the ability to use her this turn, uh, and so I've got three moves to kill two guys. So clearly, I should be using grenades to make sure I get the kills. So you can see me just making moves and so forth, so that I can move to better throwing positions, basically. You can see me just sort of adjusting where I want to be, going, if I kill this person, then the other person can't shoot me from here in case I don't kill him, because I know the grenade, as long as you throw it correctly, is an instant kill of a thin man. So, you can see there, I throw off the grenade and get the kill. I'm hoping the video is syncing up, because I'm having a little bit of trouble with my video player and this, and I'm hoping it's not too far through. What's it reading? Six minutes... Yeah, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Um, we'll see. All right, so make sure that I got both kills that turn, and we move forward. Um, just to make sure that if my person's still panicking, then it's not too bad. All right, so I'm gonna let you watch a little bit of this um, to sort of give an idea, as well as talking through it. Uh, Alright, so key things in this one to watch out for is just beyond this building, there's not a lot of cover, and there tends to be somebody on the other side of it. Plus, that's also where the VIP is. Um, so the lone survivor's there, so... I know where he is, so I head straight for him. Um, but the first time I played this, I spread out, I went all around the map, and it did not end well. I think I ended up losing three of six at that point. Um, I was lucky enough to get a captain really early on in one of the other missions and yeah he died unfortunately anyway that's not the point um, so the point is trying to stay alive throughout these missions um, moving up slowly uh, and moving because cover is a little bit sporadic in this area so you can either have sideways cover or front cover depending on which way you're aiming so you can see there I've, I've located the lone survivor and now I just need to approach him, which means I need to be standing in the circle next to him like we do when we recover people in other missions, which I don't think you guys have seen on my videos yet, but I believe there's one coming up. So the only way to um, activate them is to be within their circle radius, uh, and their radius is usually two spots in a 360 arc around them, but sometimes it doesn't quite work, like you could be on the edge, it can register you being in, but it doesn't count, so you need to effectively stand next to them, is the safest way of doing it. So you can see me here, I'm just sort of leapfrogging and making sure that when I do decide to collect the VIP, which will trigger uh, additional alien activity, i.e. you saw it when we did the bomb, when the bomb is then registered as activated or deactivated, so to speak, more enemies are put onto the map and they usually do this by giving them elevated ground so I know for a fact where a couple of them are going and I'll show you where they are uh, but then they only trigger once you approach the VIP or the survivor whatever you want to call him so one of them is if you go up that drain pipe on the building just there which I'll do possibly this turn there you go you can see me going up there now ish Hopefully the video is in sync with my audio today. <laughs> um, and if it is, then you can see exactly what I'm doing and what I'm trying to do at the same time. So I go for elevation because I know that there was a guy out there, um, but he won't be able to have his shot this turn. So I move another guy into that area, Thomas Martin, so he can do what he does. And I believe he gets the kill. Yes, he does. Alright, so then check the rest of the guys on auto watch. Um, Thomas is going to go and collect the VIP in the next turn. And Martinez, who I stupidly put him up here, I reckon it was a bad move to put him up there because 
I need to put him onto Overwatch, and he's only got a pistol, which means it takes two shots, two hits, sorry, I should say, to kill a thin man. Putting him up there with, even with Overwatch on is a bad idea. Um, it's not something I thought through. I thought, oh, I want my sniper to have elevation. I should have put two guys up there, both with Overwatch, and then pulled the one who wasn't the sniper down. So that's a little trip for you guys. Put two players up on that roof um, before you get the VIP. Um, move the VIP slowly, so you want to have two lead and one on the... So, one at point, one with the VIP, and one behind the VIP, and then one up high, if you've got four. If you've got five or more, so five or six, that extra person can be scouting ahead or behind, however comfortable you feel, um, cover wherever you are getting attacked from. And you can see that those rolls, point, flank, and escort alternate depending on how much I want to move and how, who shot this turn as well. So Martinez up on the roof is okay. I overshoot the VIP here uh, with Martin. I move that guy Weiss up a bit further and then chuck him onto Overwatch. Uh, Overwatch is fantastic for this sort of thing. It means that if you do happen to get a little flanked it's not super bad. And you can see how I'm sort of doing my leapfrogging there. Um, you want to try and put your VIP into double cover like that, or have him able to move it into single cover and hunker down. If he can hunker down and be in double cover, ideally that's best. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to move into an exposed area just to get that sort of scenario. You want to be able to get everything working how you want it to. Alright, so you can see here, this, this part of the mission is kind of boring, so I apologize for that. It's not always an exciting strategy game. Um, but it can turn into a literal shitstorm in less than two seconds if you don't do things correctly. If you rush it a little bit, I could have gone and gone, alright, oh, I know where the bad guys are. I'll just rush ahead, dashing every turn with all my guys. I could have ended up in a bad spot, so I switch Martin over to his sniper and check him on Overwatch, just because I want to be able to shoot across. Now I'm using my character who's got two hit points to do a lot of the lead running, because effectively she's going to be gravely injured and out for like a fortnight regardless, so I figure that she's not well trained enough to warrant saving if she does take one or more point of damage and is goes down to critically injured. So I'm using her as bait. Um, it's not the best strategy. It works okay. Because um, ideally what you're doing is you're killing a character. If things go poorly. Um, so yeah. As you can probably imagine. Alright, so as you get close to this second, the last building. Two creatures, a thin man and a sectoid, come up on top. Uh, the following spots and as you can see there my sniper will be able to take the first one out. Pew. Nice shot. Pew pew to the rooftop. Pew pew. Alright cool so we know that there's only one more guy. As you get close to the other spot another I believe it's another sectoid jumps up onto the other roof so at the moment you want to be able to clear the other roof. So there's two ways of clearing it. Either you can go up or you can clear it from below. So I'm just going to be moving forward and overwatching and hunkering down until I can get into a position with one of my guys to be able to make that shot. Um, because the enemy is going to be on overwatch as well. So I'm trying to prompt the enemy to move to me. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I can't remember if it works in this scenario or if I break first. No, you can see me, the entire turn was overwatch and hunker down. Sorry, head down. Yep, forced him into the move. And take all the Overwatch shots on him. Doesn't matter if they miss, doesn't matter if they hit. The point is, you know where that alien is now. And you know that it's okay to move forward. Because you knew that he was the only one there. Alrighty. Um, so let's start to move forward. I'm going to move forward with Keep first. I'm um, trying not to move her through the poison cloud that's left behind from the Thin Man's death. And we will just move the survivor up slowly. Um, 
keeping him safe wherever possible um, and moving him into good strategic locations when I can. Alright, so uh, I'm just trying to think what we're in this movie. Alright, so at the end of this video, I'm just going to tell, it, uh, tell you a little bit about it now. Um, we do a little bit of more towards um, our current objective, which is to capture a live alien. So we're going to make the containment vessel and so forth. And then the start of the next mission will pop up almost immediately after we build that containment facility. Um, I've stopped the video there, there's no more, I'll probably try and get into my wrap up at that point as well, but I might not be able to do it perfectly. Um, so, the intent is there, if you see me getting into that sort of thing and I start cutting the video really quickly, apologies in advance. Alright, so, I'll do the rest of the other stuff. Um, remember to subscribe if you like this series or you like all my other stuff. Um, the best way to keep up to date with it is to uh, subscribe to the video and subscribe to my channel. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. I post everything up to Twitter. I've also got a Facebook one up now. You can find everything under Armstrong Gaming Tags. Um, you don't need to follow us on that, but if you want to stay up to the loop and you don't want to subscribe, uh, Twitter is the best way to do it. Um, if you've got any questions or queries, comments, you can leave them either A on Twitter or B on this YouTube clip. Uh, the comment section is down there below. I respond to every message. Um, yeah, if you want me to see anything, you want me to change any of the names, you want your character, your name to be in the game, just say, hey, dude, change Martin to this, please. You know, we shouldn't be Weiss. You're not saying his name correctly. Change it to this. Guys, whatever. I'm, I'm really flexible here. I'm catering to an audience. <laughs> All right, so we managed to trigger the last thin man. I thought he was going to be a sectoid, but I was clearly wrong. Uh, Martinez with the last kill. Um... And from here, I know that it's the last guy, but at the same time, I don't really want to stuff up and be all cocky. Um, I've had a couple of bad experiences on this level, so I'm just sort of teetering myself through, making sure that it's okay. Alright. Cool. So, we're going to move him there and start moving the survivor into the zone where we can get him out safely. Now, if you're to move any of your guys in there before the survivor and have them wait a full turn, it prompts you to end the mission, i.e. abort. You don't want to do that. You want to just move the survivor in. That survivor, as soon as he hits the objective zone, the evac zone, the mission's over. So you just run him in there, mission's over, fly back to base. Nice and simple. Cool, so we get three promotions out of that. Uh, Martinez has gone up to a corporal. I'm going to give him squad sight, which means if my mates can see it, theoretically, so can Martinez. It just means that he can put on more shots without moving. Put sprinter on because I like to be able to move more tiles. It goes well with squad sight. And I missed what that last one was for Weiss, but eh, it doesn't matter too much. So we've got an engineer and a scientist and a bit of cash out of that, which will help us. Pretty much that's all we needed. So we've gone up the squad size. Um, I don't want to put, I thought about putting work, work on, a um, bit more experience from kills, but I decided against it. Um, I figure not really worth it at this point. Uh, if, if you disagree, that's fine. And give a medal to another sniper. Alright, cool. So, we move forward. Um, you can see there I'm excavating a bit more. Um, I want to sort of expand my workshops down. So, no, sorry, I think I'm going to put it across. No, no, I put the alien containment there, and I'm going to put a workshop underneath that workshop, but, yeah. We're getting there, guys. Uh, Alright, so you can see with Carapace Armour's 10 days to go, so like, up things 10, and so forth. Yeah, so, hopefully by the next video, we will pick up uh, Carapace Armour, you can start seeing some really cool stuff. Anyway, this is Matt from Armstrong Gaming, this is me wrapping up the video. Have a good night, guys. Catch you later.